Hello humans, I'm the Alien Doctor, but you could call me Alien, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install Minecraft Bedrock Edition resource packs and behavior packs, also known as add-ons. I'll also be showing you how to avoid viruses, because apparently that's something that people actually need help with, but whatever, I'll show you how to do that as well. As well as that, I'll also be showing you how to install them not only on your single player worlds, but I'll also show you how to install them on servers as well, because that is often something that people want to do on to how to do them on Bedrock Edition dedicated servers. Without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to actually download an add-on, so we're just going to exit Minecraft and open up your favourite web browser. So there are two main places where you might download add-ons, the first one is MCPEDL and the second one is GitHub, so I'll show you how to download add-ons on both of these websites. I am aware that there's other places that you can download add-ons on, however those are generally the two main places. So the first one we're going to download is this connected glass add-on. This is one that I have showcased before on my channel. So anyway, normally on MCPEDL, you're just going to want to scroll down all the way to the bottom, where eventually you'll get to this section, the downloads. You're going to want to click on the latest version. Now, if it is a pack like this, that is a behavior pack and a resource pack, you're going to want to make sure to download both of them. So just click on the green text. It then warns you that you're leaving MCPEDL. That's because you're not downloading it through MCPEDL because most add-on creators like to add ads to their download links basically to make money. So if you just press click here to continue, this will take you to a website called Linkvertise. Linkvertise is a website that a lot of add-on creators use just to basically get a little bit of monetization from people actually downloading their stuff. Now you're going to want to ignore basically all of this stuff, like don't click on any of this because you don't want to. They'll probably give you a virus or something. All of this stuff, just ignore it. The thing that we want is this, free access with ads, this button right here. Now there is also direct access with premium if you want to pay for premium but there's no real reason to. If you just press on free access with ads then you can Basically, pretend to read some articles for a, a little bit of time, and then it will give you access. So if you press on discover interesting articles, then it will come up with these articles. Don't click on any of them, unless you want to read them, but they're probably bad because they're being advertised here. Anyway, you're just going to want to wait on here. You'll see if you try Xing out, after a certain amount of time it will let you. I think it's like 15 seconds that you have to wait on that page or something. So just, yeah, do that. Then you can press continue to connected glass RP. And it will open up Mediafire. Mediafire is a pretty safe website as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes they give you these ads, like this one and this one. So you're going to want to make sure to press this download button, not this download button. Because this download button is actually from an ad. Now you can of course use ad blocks or just close the ads. I would recommend using an ad block on websites like this. Something that's quite nice is that Mediafire also will scan files for viruses. But anyway, we're just going to want to press download and then you can pick where to download it to and all that sort of thing. It doesn't matter too much. So that was how to download something on MCPEDL. This is like the most common way add-on creators will distribute their add-ons using Mediafire and Linkvertise and things like that. But what about on GitHub? So let's just say that we wanted to download my better netherite resource pack. So as you can see, we are on the GitHub repository for my better netherite resource pack because it's open source. Now, downloading stuff from GitHub is generally always safe because stuff on GitHub is generally always open source, meaning that you can look at the code and basically decide for yourself if anything is dodgy as well as that other people can obviously decide if you don't really know what it all means. And that goes for pretty much anything on GitHub. But anyway, most of the time there'll be a releases tab right here. If there isn't a releases tab, then there may be like a download link in the description of the repository here or up here or something. But for all my add-ons that are on GitHub, you will go to the releases tab to download them. So on the releases tab, you'll see this better netherite muck pack or basically just a dot file that's what you're going to want to look for is a muck file 
You're just simply going to want to click on that and it will download that Muckpack file and you can choose to save it wherever you want if you have that set up. Okay, so now let's actually take a look at how you import add-ons into your game and that sort of thing. So this is only for Windows 10 or I'm actually on Windows 11, but it will also work on Windows 10. And this is just in a single player world or in a realm. So basically the file that you downloaded, it will be .muckpack or .muck addon or something like that. You're simply going to want to open it. Now, if you're on mobile especially, you may have to set your file explorer to actually open inside of Minecraft, but eventually that will import like it says right here, successfully imported. If it hasn't successfully imported, it may come up saying that it's detected a duplicate pack. That's because you may have a pack with the same UUID. So to uninstall a pack, you're simply going to want to open settings and then you're going to want to scroll down to the storage. And then you can see here all of your resource packs and behavior packs are here. It's also a good idea if your game is running slow to actually hit this multi-select button, then go to cache data and actually clear all of your cache data this will actually speed up your game a little bit especially the menus but yeah anyway once you've done that if it is at just a standalone resource pack like my better netherite then you can go to my packs and apply it in your global resources which is an option you can find in settings so better netherite activate there we go it's now been activated and nice so now i'm actually using the better netherite resource pack that i made however if it is a behavior pack, it is a little bit more of a complicated process. However, it's still pretty easy to do. So for a behavior pack, you're going to want to press the pencil icon on your world. And obviously you can also do this when you first created the world, but you're going to want to scroll down to behavior packs, my packs, and then press on the pack and press activate to add it to the actual pack selection. And overall, that is pretty straightforward. There's not too much there to do. And yeah, after you've added the pack into the active section, that behavior pack will be active on the world. Some behavior packs also have resource packs attached to them, so make sure that they are both attached. But yeah, anyway, that's really, really simple how to add it onto worlds. And it's a similar process for realms. I don't have a realm, so I can't show you. However, it is effectively the same. But what about on the Bedrock Edition dedicated server? So the Minecraft Bedrock Edition dedicated server software, or BDS for short, can be downloaded on Minecraft.net. And it is the vanilla server software that Mojang themselves put out. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the best if you want a vanilla playing experience and things like that. So I'm just going to download and create a server just for the purpose of this tutorial. Obviously, you may already have your server set up, hopefully, and stay tuned because in the future, I'm actually going to be doing a server setup tutorial. Simply for the purpose of this video, I have just set up a quick Minecraft Bedrock Edition dedicated server. In the future, I'm going to make a tutorial on how to do this properly, but for now, we've just set up a simple one right here. So your layout in terms of the server files should look something like this. This is just the default layout. I literally haven't modified it whatsoever. So there are going to be three folders that are important for this. The first one is the world folder, which contains the world folder for your world on your server. And then the next one, or the next two is the behavior packs folder and also the resource packs folder. Now this process is a little bit more manual than it really should be, but I'll show you how to do it in the easiest way, at least I think, of how to actually add packs. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is actually load up Minecraft and you're going to need to either create a single player world or use an existing one. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm literally just going to use Aliencraft because why not? Now what you're going to need to do is once the world is created, click on the pencil, scroll down all the way to the bottom and then click on export world. You can then choose to export this world wherever, it doesn't massively matter. Then you gotta wait for this bar to finish whilst it's exporting the world. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, the world has fully finished exporting. And if we head over to my downloads folder, then we should see that the world is exported. So what you're going to want to do with this file is actually rename it. So you can just press F2 on your keyboard to actually do this. And you're going to want to rename the part that says .mcworld to .zip. 
like this, just press enter. Then you're gonna wanna press right click and extract all, extract. It's then going to extract this .zip archive as you have probably done before if you use Windows a lot. Okay, so finally the zip file has finished extracting as you can see right here. So we can delete it now, we don't need it. All we need is this folder. Now I'd actually recommend doing a little bit of window magic to actually get these side by side because it just comes in handy and have one that has the bedrock server and one that has your world. So you're going to need to open up your server's world folder and then you're actually going to need to copy both the world underscore behavior packs dot json and world underscore resource packs dot json from your exported world into your server's world folder like I have done here. Now we can go back to the home directory for your server and open up the behavior packs folder. And we're gonna do the same on the world and you're simply gonna to want to copy all of these behavior packs over to here, like so. And then you're gonna to wanna to do the same for the resource packs folder, which is obviously over here, like that. There we go, they've all copied over. You can now start your server once again and if we connect to it, we should see that it actually works. So just to show you that this works, I have done the same thing to the Pinecraft Season 3 test server, which is what this is. And if we actually switch back to Minecraft and on the Pinecraft Season 3 test server, you'll be able to see that we have got the add-ons that I've got, including the mini blocks, which I just broke, as well as other stuff. Here we go. So we've got the mini block add-on, as you can see right here. And I did this by using the exact same process that I just showed you. The only reason I'm not showing you that it works by that exact same process on the same server I did it on is because for whatever reason, probably due to my weird internet setup, I cannot connect to that server. But anyway, you can see here that the mini block add-on works, which is what I added to Pinecraft Season 3. But what happens if you want to update some add-ons? Well, it's pretty simple. You're simply gonna wanna follow the same process I did, except for create a new world only with the add-ons that you need to update and simply delete the old, outdated folders from your server. It's incredibly simple to do and really not that hard. Now, if you need any support with doing this or anything else I show in this tutorial, then please do join my Discord server, link down below. There is a help channel there where I or someone else will be able to help you out. That goes for any of my tutorials. Other than that, feel free to like and subscribe today to join the Alien Empire and to see more Minecraft Bedrock Edition content. I'll see you in the next video coming very, very soon. Bye.